I do you have a major problem with your American tech tree? You have a 10.3 Abrams that you can purchase with a horrible penetrating round. The entire American tech tree is off balanced. I'm not going to get into the fact of vehicles lack in penetration. Truly, it's classified and you don't need to know it. You have the Apache that can only use one default type of round. Doesn't make sense. You give multiple aircraft with bullpup missiles with no targeting pod. And then, most American vehicles, you up tier, knowing they cannot survive in that battle tiering. Americans on this game or target practice. So my call is to all American Americans, stop being their target practice. They're just mad they are target practice in real life. Fix your game or face a class action suit that will have you lose the rights to your design. Powerful words have never been said. And the sentiment is probably echoed by at least five people uh, who read that post. Um, but I think it's fair to say, generally in life, if you aren't enjoying something, it's usually better just to find some stuff that you do. There was also a fantastic um, post which was uh, written, which we'll go through and uh, have a bit of uh, better fun with. So here we go. Fellow players, having played War Thunder since 2012 on PS3, Birds of Steel, which is not War Thunder, then at its release in 2013 on PC, then on PS4 up to 2017, and now on a decent gaming PC ever since, I have seen everything and wanted to write a text explaining what is wrong with War Thunder and why it will not improve. So this guy has been playing for over 10 years. And he believes the game will never get better. Gaijin never has been on our side. They have, since at least 2017, always tried to gain ground, never giving something back. Let me elaborate. A great example of this is when they tried to add paid GE modifications for vehicles and planes. And For example, for 200 GE, you could give a tank a third FPE. For planes, you could reduce their turn rate by 0.5 seconds. This resulted in a huge backlash, of course, something as community knows well with the economy causing the latest backlash to date. Gajin removed their post within 24 hours and acted like it never happened. No excuses, no explanations, radio silence. Uh, this is false, actually. They put out a post saying that they're going to rejig um, what they're going to do and that they apologize that people didn't like the idea. So I don't know where that came from. This proved they are willing to experiment directly with their community see their reactions, and at worst case scenario, it makes them free publicity for YouTubers. War Thunder's huge community backlash, join them. You see the idea, because controversial videos work better. So, your idea in your head is they personally do negative things that they know people will rage at, therefore they get more clicks, leading more negativity to them, and more aggression. That is a hell of a business strategy um, and doesn't work for multi-million dollar companies, only works for like individual rage bait streamers on a short-term basis. The ever-worsening economy is another problem. Tiers keep increasing. New vehicles, costs keep increasing. Now you have several 400k RP vehicles to research in order to reach top tier. This adds in inflation. Uh, they do... Um, I think like every six months or a year, massive reductions in research. So therefore, it actually takes as much time to get to top tier as it does previously. When the old top tier was here, the 400k vehicles were those vehicles. And now a lot of them are 220k or 160k. It's just how it goes. Another example is when event vehicles used to always be premiums. Players would do the events because it gave them a free premium vehicle to grind with. Although honestly, events never were fun when you had to grind for something. The only fun events were April Fools, or the occasional events that are now gone, like Guardian Angels. Uh, although it went back online last month after years of pause. 
Um, they changed over to the event vehicles instead of the premiums uh, because people were asking for high tier vehicles out of events and they didn't want to give people high tier premiums because that would mean that they would just play those and nothing else, therefore breaking the matchmaker. Um, this actually happened starting with, I believe, was it the IS-7 event or maybe once before it? But yeah, um, this is a demand thing. Uh, this is not actually something which is based around them, you know, trying to nuke people or whatever. They also took all of the premiums that were usually in advance previously and stuck them in the battle pass. Uh, so now you have, what is it, four battle passes a year, which have three premium vehicles in them, which are all mid-tier. Back in the day, all of those premium vehicles would actually be in the uh, standard, um, in the standard, like, uh, you know, events that they do, like the summer event, the winter event, and stuff like that. you got to remember that back in the day, we had a lot less events compared to now. So that's where that kind of thing comes from. Talking of April Fools, this year's event has no issue having custom skins for crew, where the community has asked for months to have more skins for tankers. This also shows that Gaijin is putting priority towards marketing the game than updating the game itself. Um, no, I think it's probably the way to put that. If you have a look at the last major update or any major update, you'll see a bunch of changes in there, which are either bug fixes or UI or any implementations that won't make them any money at all. Um, I doubt Napalm um, as a mechanic was one of those which made them anything. Um, a lot of the changes in the last update actually ended up breaking the game because they were changing a lot of kind of internal elements which aren't ever going to make them money apart from having a more complete game, which gets people more interested. Uh, the customization angle is interesting when chatting to games. So customization is the last ebb that, that should be focused on, meaning that if a game is focusing on customization before it is focusing on something working, it has done something very wrong because uh, nobody's going to want to buy something from something that doesn't work. This is something that's been known for a long time, and it's something that Gaijin stuck to for an incredibly long time too. Today, in 2024, the only premium vehicles we get are generally rank 2 and 3, where we are now reaching rank 8 and soon rank 9. Some event vehicles may be rank 4, perhaps rank 5 if you're lucky, but with rank 9 coming, those will be essentially useless to grind anything. Depends where you are in the tech tree, isn't it? And also which tech trees you're grinding. Um, I mean, I found a lot of vehicles useful for doing events and also doing other stuff. Uh, once again, just completely forgetting the Battle Pass exists. The Battle Pass is an event um, in of itself. I know people don't like to see it as an event because it's kind of an extra thing on the side, but that is where all of those premium vehicles went. You also have the War Bond Shop, and also you have the good old gacha crates and all of these things. So there's many different ways of gaining premiums nowadays, you know, and maybe in the future they'll increase the rank of premiums that they give out to rank 5 or whatever. But you do have to remember naval exists, naval's still stuck at lower ranks, and yeah, it's just one of those things. So yeah. Back when I played the early War Thunder, you had a 3 times XP modifier for your first win, and this for each nation. Many friends would play the game daily to get their increased rewards, and this sped up research significantly. Yeah, they would play like a few games and then leave. Um, so they would play, you know, maybe three games, get their boosters, and then just leave. You know what happens now? So they traded systems. And this is, some, once again, this is something that's really tough to understand. Uh, they moved to the booster system. So previously, you didn't have boosters. You didn't have the SL or XP boosters. Instead, all you had was times twos uh, per day. And then on the weekends, you had a times five per a nation. At the same time, you also had a system where you had a level, uh, which was based on, you know, your nation up to level 20. So every time you unlocked a level, you unlocked a bunch of vehicles at the same time, instead of working on individual vehicles. That fundamentally changed a long time ago. And so nowadays in War Thunder, you have way more vehicles that are easily accessible, 
but also you have more vehicles overall, so therefore it's less accessible at the high end, right? So that's the general thing. But yeah, they moved over to the booster system. You know, there's there's ways of looking at both and saying which one's better, which one's worse, or maybe they could combine both. But to, to try and paint it as, you know, oh, well, you had this in the past, well, you're completely forgetting about all of the new systems that we have now and also the reductions in RP over time that are around. Uh, then, uh, today, with battle trophies and the like, we have much less boosters. Essentially, before, we had 300% SL and 300% XP booster per nation and daily. It was 200%. But today, we're lucky to get a 200%, and it's only for SL or RP, and we never have those dailies. Uh, we get them on the big crates, which drop every seven days of playing straight. Gaijin defends themselves, saying today's RPs are lower to get vehicles. They're quicker to grind, but with these boosters gone, it turns out the grind is much worse. No, it isn't. Uh, you just have rose-tinted glasses. The grind isn't worse than it was previously. Um, the only thing that's changed is the amount of vehicles that you have to get through. The SL purchase has got worse, because you have to purchase more stuff, but when it comes to the RP, because of the way that they do it, where they add in um, a bunch of vehicles and then they reduce the overall RP that you need for the tech tree, the idea is is that it keeps in line with how much of the grind that you know you're willing to go through. There are plenty of videos, there are plenty of channels when it comes to War Thunder, which kind of showcase grinding through tech trees in a few days. Something that you couldn't do in the past, it wasn't possible to do, especially during the level system. Uh, since it would take you long to find uh, games at high tiers and don't even talk about the imbalance of those things. Back when I played the early War Thunder, uh, you had a 3 times XP modifier for your first win, and oh no, sorry, I already went through that. As I said, it was 2 times and then 5 times on the weekend. Uh, hacking has always been a problem since tanks were introduced. No, hacking was a problem before tanks were introduced. I can literally show you videos from when it was just planes, where people had uh, full-on radars, if you want to class it as that, and also aimbots from the early echelons of the game. There was a... Uh, there was a... YouTuber, which I can't remember his name, uh, but he changed it to, I think, ED Plays or something like that um, to try and get away from uh, just doing good old uh, War Thunder content. Uh, he was called Kebble. Um, oh, my God. What was his name? Uh, was it Kebble or was it something uh, Ke Kevlar or... It, it was something with a K in it, but basically he showcased um, uh, 10 years ago a cheat that was in arcade where you could just see everything going on sadly many people today buy accounts that were either stolen or grinded by bots or with hacks to make the grind much quicker and this is one of the biggest incentives to hack for war thunder it's a business <laughs> i mean if you could if you if you actually right okay this is an interesting thing Number one, uh, there are plenty of sites that are available where you can see these things. You can actually track the buyers and you can track how many things that they sell over time. And the money isn't exactly great um, in that kind of setup. And also, since the accounts get tracked as well, since guys you know about these places, once they are active again, once they're moving again, they just get banned instantly. So it isn't a very good business model. The main thing that people actually do uh, when they're botting accounts is they use the bots to refer a friend um, through the refer a friend system to pump up one specific account and then you can sell that or then you can just use it as a main thing back in the day this used to happen a lot with squadron battle players and many other players where they would all share accounts they would grind up to rank four or five get all the ge bonuses and pump it into one to cap one account and then they would use that for the squadron battles or they would use that for the competitive play this has happened for many years it isn't something that is more recent, it's something that has just become more apparent because more people are actually paying attention to it. And they will never be gone, it's impossible with modern games to prevent ESPs or even simple microcontrollers. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean at the end of the day, um, you won't ever get rid of cheaters, especially in a free-to-play game. It's just a constant battle, I think they've been doing pretty good on it, if I'm honest with you, I think overall 
If you have a look at the amount of accounts that they've banned, if you were playing Naval, the Imperial flagship event, if you played Air recently, you have a lot less Ghost Bombers, you have a lot less random Eugens or random Helenas at the back of the map just firing shells or whatever they've decided to lock onto. So generally, it's a lot better than it was, you know? And then, there's an amazing 40-minute video about modern game hacking and why it will never be gone. Well, yeah, I'm sure there is, because just like all technology, it improves, and because it's a counter technology, meaning that it improves and then it has to be countered, it's just going to keep going over and over again. We've talked about recently with the Apex stuff and even with the Valorant stuff, with the kernel-level anti-cheats and all of this, where it's just not even making a dent. People are still cheating, and people are still able to do all these things. Tarkov, of course, being a huge one. It's amazing how in a few months Tarkov has had to ban 30,000 players, uh, which is more than Gaijin has banned in a year. So it's, uh, it's always going to be an issue, but it is how it is. What did not help with hackers was the closure of the Chinese server on the 17th of October 2022. It is well known that Chinese gaming communities have a much higher tendency to employ hacks than Western players, simply coming from a different mindset. Ah uh, yes, the mindset, that's what's happening. Um, yeah, a lot of Chinese people cheat, there's also a billion of them. Um, one of the most high profile people that um, in the CSGO community that cheated was an Indian um, competitive gamer who actually ended up cheating at a LAN. Uh, I can't remember his name, but it was hilarious uh, that he was doing it. You know what's really funny about a lot of the account sellers, though? And a lot of the people that I know in that community and have um, looked into over the years, uh, having to kind of learn about these different stuff, they're all Eastern European. And the reason for this is because they come from areas of lower economic background and this is an easy way for them without much, uh, you know, without much chance of something going wrong to be able to get something over on other people and make some money. Same why a lot of artists uh, come from a lot of Asian countries and, you know, broadcast on the internet so therefore they can make more money doing their services in USD instead of other currencies. It's just how it goes. So, yeah, I I know in these threads it's always good to just point fingers at China and yada, 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 China this, China that, but it's just kind of boring. Like, I'd, I, get the, I get the idea of stereotypes and all of this stuff. What we need right now is we need some kind of hard evidence on these things instead of just going around and doing that and saying that people have a different mindset because, you know, nobody anywhere else cheats. But, yeah, the mindset is different. I'm not saying EU, US, and SA, SA players don't cheat. In fact, I've seen it plenty of times in squadron battles back when I unlocked the U100, and I'm sure you reported all of them, didn't you? Oh, wait. But China is more impacted by cheating and is also much more used to MMOs and grinding accounts with hacks, a practice not well known to the West. That's just a lie. Um, I... <laughs> As if World of Warcraft never had a metric ton of botters in it. Also, Korean MMOs are one of those things which get insanely botted as well. We even have MMOs now which are designed to actually be played AFK. So, an AFK grinder, which you turn up every once in a while, look at the rewards, go, ooh, isn't that cool? Well done, team. And then you just send it on its way again. There are tons of games like this on mobile. But yeah, World of Warcraft had to ban millions of players. Millions of them <laughs> over the years. And to say that, you know, that isn't seen in the West is just crazy. Like, I, I don't know. Like, what do we class as the West as well? What is... Because China, you can class as a country, but where, where do we stop on the West so we can go from there? The change was fairly visible, and only recently, in late 2023 was something done against massive cheaters in War Thunder. Not really. Like, uh, I mean, there was ban waves previously. People just don't realize it because Gaijin never made any statements about it. But if you actually have a look back and you have a look at, you know, their statements on account banning and stuff, they have done it for years. The only difference is last year, they made a public post about it. And this actually is the thing that's changed. So it isn't the fact that they've been dealing with these things more or moving these things around more because Easy Anti-Cheat itself was added way before 2023. The big difference is that they've actually started being more public about what they're doing, right? What they're doing. 
So it isn't the fact that they're doing anything different. It's just you're noticing it because they're telling you they're doing it. And that is two very different things. And usually when companies start actually publicly talking about stuff that they're doing, it's because either they want to placate people, which, you know, is a fair point, or what they're trying to do is they're trying to gather more resources from people to try and deal with the issue. Now, you'll never know which one it is, but that's why they do it. Otherwise, they just do stuff in the background because usually it isn't great as a company to go, hey, guys, we have a cheating problem because the <laughs> moment you say that, it puts off a lot of people from playing the game and then the narrative becomes about the cheating problem, which, hey, presto, over the last year, I'd say half the narratives coming out of War Thunder have been about that, just like how the leaked stuff and the confidential information was the stuff beforehand. So it's just kind of how it is. Bots also completely ruin naval battles, although honestly without them, there would be perhaps 10 players playing it. Another stupid meme, uh, which people say. This guy just is, he's just hitting all of the stereotypes. Like, uh, if you played during the Imperial flagship event, or if you played even now with naval, there's plenty of people playing it. Is there more people playing naval than other game modes? No, but there's always going to be a small player base or sorry, smaller player base playing naval, just because of the nature of it. But to say that you can't get into games, or there's nobody playing it, is ridiculous. For me, I was able to do the the Varisabung um, page of history pretty quick, in about an hour, hour and a half, with the 5-7 German lineup. During the Imperial flagship event, I was able to spade so many of the different cruisers moving around the place. And yeah, it's... I. <laughs> There's a meme about naval where there's a bunch of people or there's like one person screaming in the sauna, in the corner just going, I hate naval. It's awful. Look at it. Nobody plays it. Ah! And then there's just a group of people there who, you know, they stick out their thumb and just go, all right, bud, and then just keep talking about naval. That's literally what naval is like. There's tons of people who play it. You just don't see them because they don't actively chat about stuff because they just want to chill, just like a lot of people when it comes to War Thunder. Same with, like, a lot of helicopter pilots, same with a lot of, like, you know, biplane enjoyers, all of these things. This brings me to the downfall. Update 1.67, followed by update 1.77. We're talking about the 2017-2018 era. So this guy believes the downfall started, uh, what is that, seven years ago? And he's still here. Still here. Just think about that, right? You, If you think something is breaking or broken or dying seven years ago and you continue playing it and continue having this mindset. Now, what I want to make sure in this point is it is best to just let go. I was actually involved in a bit of a like Q&A school project thing. Somebody was writing an essay about, um, I think, guessing it was gaming addiction or something like that. And uh, there was a bunch of questions about War Thunder. And, you know, they asked me my opinions on it. Like, okay, um, what do you do if you feel, what advice would you give people if you feel addicted to a game? And it's like, realize it's a secondary part of your life. It's not a primary part of your life because of the fact that, you know, it doesn't, it can't benefit or take away things. All it can do is manipulate what you do with your free time. And so the best thing to do is to find something else to focus on. And that really is it at the end of the day. If you feel like, you know, you're in and watching this thing get destroyed, um, <laughs> it's just insane to think about. The other thing also to note since 2017 in War Thunder is the simple fact that the game has had record numbers of players, has had a ton of people playing it, has gone from strength to strength, has stayed in, you know, the Steam top 10 or top 20 every year for the last five years. Obviously, the company's doing really well. It's expanded. They're working on other games. You know, they're one of the leading publishers in Europe right now. But yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> the game is falling apart. Update 1.67 was the first I remember to sell OP premiums. Then I I don't know why that is the case. There was m there was plenty of overpowered 
plenty of overpowered aviation premiums back in the day. You know, the Ascender, which is still around and still insane, uh, may I just say. And there's plenty of them that have been in just around the place and just chilling. Like uh, the good old XP-50. The XP-50 was added in update 1.31, right? Update 1.31. That's been broken since update 1.31, but yeah. Update 1.67 was the first I remembered to sell OP premiums, the i6 and the IU251. This started the still ongoing pattern of selling powerful premiums in the name of profit, and worse as today's OP premiums are now generally squadron vehicles. <laughs> what? Uh, who don't have premium bonuses but are very powerful, such as the BMP2M and the modernized 2A4PL. <laughs> right. What about all the other ones? The Firecrest? You think the Firecrest is an overpowered premium? The Shimakaze? I mean, the Shimakaze is pretty good, but it's not OP. The SKR-7 is OP. That one's dumb. But there's also a tech tree equivalent, the SKR-1, right? So you could just play that one. And then also, at the same time, you know, you have the M1A1 AIM. That's not an OP vehicle. The TADUs that are squadron vehicles, they're not OP either. I don't know, man. Like this, it's very much cherry picking, unfortunately. The is it the Rosomacha or whatever? Like we're gonna say that one. After then, update 1.77. By the way, the I6 was OP because it was busted um, at the time. The IU251 was pretty good too, but people would always use it wrong, which kind of sucks. But yeah, it finally went up in BR a few years afterwards. The I6 um, had a bug in its turret where they basically added too much armor. <laughs> which made it really annoying to deal with. It also has the best reload for the 122s uh, around that BR, which everybody forgets about. So yeah, that one is a bit OP and has been for a long time. There are also many premiums they've added which haven't been um, OP, such as the M728. Then update 1.77 was the first to sell what was essentially top tier performing premiums, the XM1. It didn't have the armor, but it had a lot of similar stats to the M1 Abrams that was the real top tier at the time. Comparing the XM1 to the M1 Abrams is uh, a bit ridiculous. The M1 Abrams has better firepower, better mobility, better survivability, and also it has smoke grenades. It has everything better than it. So... If you were in the M1 Abrams, you would just annihilate the XM1. Just like how they just added the F20 Tiger Shark, and if you bought that thing, you're going to get annihilated by SU-27s and higher Echelon F16s or F15s or whatever's around at the time. They're bad vehicles to pick up. After update 1.77, we saw the additions of many fake premiums, as I call them which are squadron vehicles. No, you saw the addition of squadron vehicles. They actually have a completely different setup. And once again, you're just forgetting the Firecrest exists. And all of the naval ones, you're just focusing on ground. Which is... <laughs> Everybody always focuses on ground. They just forget anything else in the game exists. Don't even talk about the YH. For example, the M1A1 AIM, it's not OP. The Leopard 2PL also isn't OP. The BMP-2M is very good and should have a tech tree equivalent. The TADUK and the Bishma. The Bishma. <laughs> Imagine saying the Bishma's OP. The worst Soviet MBT in the game. In addition to that, you have market vehicles such as the Maca US Macava Mark III, the AGS, the Losat, the 2AV, Vilcas, PT-16, Moderna, 292, UM-2, and so on. Yeah, you have all of these vehicles which are, once again, desired. If you run an event which just has mid-tier vehicles in it, you get so much complaining. And that is the issue. As the game has progressed, so has the player base. So what happens is a lot of people who started in 2013, 2014, 2015, they become disillusioned with what they see before them. Because the game changes, the overall player base changes, and therefore they just become a granddad and just wonder why why do these kids like these things don't they remember back in my day where i had this thing and we had to deal with it and that's how it was don't they remember the good old days no because they weren't there and they want the top tier stuff that's why a lot of the conversations i have right now with a lot of people are starting off the game they go hey 
what tech tree should I should I grind to, or what tech tree has the best top tier? Those are the most common questions, because there's a lot of people who just want to get to top tier stuff, and one of the and one of the ways that Gaijin facilitates that is to do these events with these high tier vehicles because they appeal to the most people, and that sucks from my point of view. I don't like it, never have, don't like it at all. Prefer mid tier premiums, but it's just them reacting to the community that they have. That's why there's more American USSR and Germany events or premium vehicles too. It's because of the fact that when you sit down and you look at how many people play each of the areas, that those are the areas that most people play and want stuff for. The purpose of squadron vehicles is not to sell more top tier premiums. It is primarily to bait low level players into playing their top tier. As you unlock squadron vehicles extremely fast, if you're in an active squadron, whatever their ranks. This is done in the hopes of letting low tier players play high tier, and try to sell them premiums to make the grind quicker and complete their lineup. Most new players, or low level players, in War Thunder don't know what squadrons are. They don't know what they are. Go, go and actually talk to new players in the squadron system and how it works. They just don't know what it is. Squadron vehicles are there as a secondary thing to be able to grind alongside your standard stuff. And if people choose to run them by themselves, instead of run them with, you know, squads or whatever, then yeah, they're going to have a pretty rough time. And it sucks, and I wish the system was different. Different. I wish they could only use them if they'd researched another vehicle at that BR. I think that would be a much better system. But it doesn't exist like that. But this idea of trying, once again, just this example that you have in your head of this is what it does the problem is you have no basis for that apart from seeing a few players at those high echelons with those types of vehicles which are low level which they could have got in any way or they could have just bought a premium to do it the very large amount of almost top tier vehicles now allow players to buy their way into top tier instantly for the small amount of over 200 dollars for a full lineup one seventy-five dollar aircraft after the other, looking at UF twenty, and it works, and that's the problem. It doesn't work because you get clapped. And this has always been the argument against doing this stuff. People can do that. People can buy their way into the high echelons of the game. They can buy the clickbait. You know, they can buy the F twenty. They can buy, you know, um, the the high tier, uh, the high tier premium battleships, which they added. But they're all just fundamentally worse vehicles than what they're going to face. And it takes one or two years for those vehicles to get to a point where they're not getting shit canned. <laughs> like, honestly, it takes a long time for something like an F-20 to be meta. Just like it took a long time for stuff like the F-5C to be meta. But when they do become meta, they become very powerful. But it's not when they're first released. When they're first released, they are bats, right? They get batted around the place and hammered because of the fact that they are fundamentally going up against vehicles that are better than them, which is why I always say to people who are, you know, more newer to the game, it's a bad idea to buy these things because you'll just be a punching bag to whatever the best vehicle is at the time because you're going to face those over and over and over again. But yeah, this is also an issue with the fact that the game has to continuously increase and continuously add and continuously move around, which I don't see another solution to, apart from just don't let it do that and just let it die, I suppose. This led to one huge issue. High tier players are now inexperienced and have no incentive to improve either. A single game of RRB at the battle rating of the F4S will show you how terrible the problem is. That's more about the fact that people are using the most efficient way to grind. Um, this, this has happened since the dawn of War Thunder. People find the easiest ways to grind and then just do it over and over again. That's why Simulator is usually very populated during events and not populated at all when not during events. This is why people gravitate to premium vehicles. They want to grind faster. It's just a simple trick. You know, the F4S thing... It's because it can rocket bases and you can get guaranteed a uh, score and you don't have to fight other people. That's it, you know, and that kind of sucks. But, you know, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> it's just how people do it. 
the way you do it, I suppose, is to give more incentives to do other things, but they'll still do it because it's the easiest way. Add to the mix bots, cheats, and you have a very terribly terrible gameplay experience. These things are one of the reasons why playing top tier is not enjoyable anymore. Uh, it depends who you're talking to. A lot of people enjoy top tier. A lot of people actually watch top tier content too. Just depends. Just depends, really. But at the end of the day, like, you know, you're going to have different things that appeal to different people. I'm once again asking, though, why you feel like uh, after being in a downfall of a game for, what, seven or eight years now, uh, you're still here. That has to be the key question. If you think a product is getting worse, if you think everything is falling apart, if you think things are all over the place, why are you still here? After seven years, just think about how long that is, how many days, how many hours, how many thoughts you've had over those years which are negative, which are leading to statements like this. Think about what you could have done in that time. In seven years, people can become doctors. In seven years, people can fundamentally change their lives in positive or negative ways. You could get two degrees. You could gain a ton of work experience. You could be moving towards so many different things. But instead, your mind is focused on what you see as negative. It's crazy to me, and always has been. And Gaijin is adding to the already bad recipe. Drone Age updates in late Q3 2022, which added the completely pointless but frustrating drones. They weren't pointless because a lot of people used them. If anything, they were too point full. Low plane spawn costs for years, which was done because it saw CAS aircraft and still does. And also because they want the game to be this whole, you know, War Thunder thing instead of Tank Thunder thing. Premium planes were amazing missiles at low BR. For example, the AK-38 with the R-60, the A-10A with the AIM-9L, and so on. Yeah, as I said many times, these strike aircraft were going to be the most unbalanced vehicles in the game. Because you can't balance them. It would have been better giving them only um, munitions which make sense for their flight characteristics, but then they would have no one would have ever played them see alpha jet <laughs> so like it's just just kind of how it goes and it sucks but you know with the br changes coming in with the uh the manipulated brs depending on game mode hopefully that will go on premium planes with missiles were sold in an attempt to solve the lack of low level players not getting kills with their premiums and leaving the game for good no, uh, they, they were sold because of the fact that the game moved on, you know, and the game progresses. So, of course, they're going to add higher BR premiums because the game progresses in a higher BR. Many players don't know how to face advanced missiles at 9 to 10 making these planes effective even when played when eyes closed. Uh, sometimes, once again, I mean, it really depends, like, on many things. It's impossible to know any of this, so I'm just going to put it over there. All of these combined lead to our current problem. We don't know where War Thunder is going. Good, because that isn't your decision, and also shouldn't be your prerogative. Because the only reason War Thunder is alive today is the lack of concurrence. There is no other games that are similar to War Thunder. There are other things that you could pass your time with. Many other things that exist. But if you want to go down that road, the key question has to be simple. Why do you think there is nothing like War Thunder? And do you think there is a company that could have done anything better? There's a reason why we're doing the War Thunder Nostalgia series, and it's basically just to go through the building blocks of this game. It's crazy. But in its current state, the very day another similar MMO comes out, who would want to play War Thunder at high tiers anymore? Probably the people who are already playing it. You know, there's been a bunch of War Thunder killers that have come out over the last few years. Um, none of them have actually done anything. If anything, they've just increased the popularity of War Thunder. Because of the fact that, um, I suppose first you have sunk cost fallacy, meaning like, it's gonna have to be a pretty aggressive thing, um, to get you away from the game, and also, 
at the same time, maybe it isn't as bad as you think it is. Who would want to keep buying $75 premiums just to make enough SL to play a top tier? SL isn't an issue anymore, hasn't been for a long time, especially with the way that they changed the mechanics last year, and also just buy them a half off or just don't buy them. You know one of the best ways of grinding SL is not through premiums? Weird, right? Chatted about it before, but not really going to go too much into it. But usually just grinding vehicles and spading them will make you way more SL and make you way more net positive than just playing a premium vehicle because of the ratios of research to SL. Who is having fun? I know we often joke about no fun only grind and such, but a lot of us played the game because it was challenging. Today, where, are the, where is the challenge? Go play competitive stuff. You can play the rank mode when it's around. You can get involved in tournaments. If you really think you're above the rest of the player base, if everybody else is just peons and they don't know what they're doing and, you know, you are the one, you are the grandfather with all the experience. You are the Jedi Master or the Kung Fu Seer, you know? Just go play those areas. Go get involved in all the competitive stuff and see where it gets you. See if it finds you finds you joy. I'm having fun though because I like playing the game. I like having a bunch of different experiences. I like focusing on a bunch of different things. It's pretty enjoyable actually. It's quite nice. I feel like the only thing keeping the game alive is the constant influx of new players buying their way into top tier. Yeah, because you're a moron. If that was the case, you wouldn't find any battles at low tier. You wouldn't find any vehicles in mid tier. And you also wouldn't find some of the most popular vehicles being stuff like T-34s and KV-1s and Panzer IVs. Your idea is shaped by the fact that you play those areas and you don't see anything else. And that is one of the criminal issues with so many... War Thunder players. They get stuck in their mindsets, they get stuck playing the same things over and over again, and they think that their experience is what the rest of the world sees too. It's not even just a War Thunder problem, it's an everything problem. Believing that other perspectives just don't exist because they don't line up with what you see. There are tons of new players, but there are tons of pre-existing players. You are one of them, you moron. You have been playing for 10 years. I am also one of them, another moron, who has been playing for more than 10 years. There are plenty of people that I know that have played for years and years and years, and plenty of people that I know who have started yesterday. The reason why the game is alive is because of a mix of old, middle, and new, and that's how MMOs keep going. Gaijin will not go back on their gains with the current premium buyers. As long as it works, don't fix it. But it, is it working to begin with, or have we not a choice? Yes, it's working. Not even going to go through whether it's the correct business model, whether it's the wrong one, whether it's the right one, yada 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 yada. Yes, it's working. It obviously is working. The game <laughs> is in a very, very good state. And it's a lot more popular compared to what it was a few years ago. It's crazy. How long will this last? Always my favorite part. Because all the rest of it is just pontificating about the past. Pontificating about the future is where the real fun is. I would love to discuss this below. If you think or not that War Thunder is failing. No, it isn't. Because given the low experience of top tier players, who couldn't even make use of Fox 3s on the dev server, <laughs> Uh, new players aren't playing the dev server. I can't see the next top tier. Rank 9 aircraft be enjoyable. Same thing with the current tank top tier, really. One team gets stomped, the other brings Cass and finishes the battle. Rinse and repeat. So no predictions, which is kind of sad. Usually we have like, oh, it'll last like another five years, or oh, it'll do this, it'll do that. The, the time when War Thunder will end is when... The guys who are running it decide they don't want to run it no more. That's literally it. The game is in a very positive position. <clears throat> it can run for many years. It can constantly expand, as it has been doing. And it will just constantly do that over and over and over again. But yeah, it isn't 
one of those things which is just going to die um, after a set period of time based on unpopularity. It is going to just be based on the front runners, on who is running it and how they feel about if they want to run it no more and if there are people to take their places who are also of their mindset. Wathund is in a very positive place, has been for many years and will continue to be. But yeah, the idea that a testing environment also shows what's going to happen in the game is nuts, since testing environments like that will always give crazy results. If you are of the mindset that everything is falling apart and you don't want to play top tier and you don't want to do this, well just don't do it. Play other parts of the game that you enjoy. You don't have to be forced to do stuff that you don't want to do. And also at the same time, as I've said for so many years, if you ain't enjoying something, don't do it. For the love of God. Just go do things that you do enjoy. Right now, on Fanatical, there is a deal for all the Fallout games. You can get Fallout, all the Fallout, Fallout 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, uh, New Vegas, 76, and, you know, the Game of the Year editions, all of that stuff, for 30 bucks. Just go play those. Manor Lords is coming out pretty soon. Give that a go. There's plenty of other things to do. Don't break yourself. Don't feel negatively affected by a bloody video game. Go enjoy yourself. Go smile. Go for a walk. Go make some food. It's insane to me that this is a thing that happens. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Tulio Ponticovo, Brendan Quinn, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Alan Hacker, Ozzy Panzer, Liam Shear, Opium Prime, Lafouche, Cam Arslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. for supporting the channel.